As in the previous video of ASP.NET, while discussing with events, we observe like whenever a button or any task is being performed on the client's browser, the code of server side is getting executed. And for doing this, actually we are submitting our page on the server side. That submission of web page on the server side is basically called the posting of the page. And here in this particular video, we will be discussing the post back. So basically, postback is a process of submitting the page on the server. Means when you click the button, for example, that particular page is submitted on the server side. It will read the operation, what all is to be done. It will be back on the browser and will do the operation, whatever is defined in the subroutine on the server side. Whenever this postback thing comes into the picture, ASP.NET provides you the implicit definition of a method called underscore do post back. All the, all the controls on a web page which can post a page on the server side are implicitly getting bound with this particular do post back function so that next time when any operation will be done, for example, if I am changing some element on a drop down list, I am clicking a button, I am writing something on the text box. If all of these controls are capable to post a page, then they will be connected to this do post back function. When this round trip occurs, like submitting the page on the server and the uh, back, when the page comes back on the client machine, on this particular time, actually a new instance of a page is sent from server to the client. All right, means suppose I am I have got some web form. I have filled up the form, all right, and finally I clicked on the submit button. So during this particular process, when I am sending the page and when the page is coming back from the server, the new instance means logically the page will not contain any of the definition which we have entered while working with the form before the post back. So that will cause us the loss of data, but as in the introduction of ASP.NET, I said like ASP.NET itself manages a kind of state management so due to which the data is recovered but logically every time when this postback takes place a new instance comes. So and one more thing which is deeply associated with this particular logic like when we request a particular page for the first time the page gets loaded. When I entered something I clicked the button page went to the server and again it will get loaded. So every time when you are posting the page or submitting the page, the reload operation is actually going on in the background. So on the multiple times when we'll do the same thing, the page load method will be executed. So we'll also have to check like the page load op method should not be executing at every time means or any code which we have written inside the page load method that should not be completed executed every time we have to make a check like whether on the first page load i want to do that or in the later postbacks so let's see practically how to work with this posting thing and we'll also check the page load execution so let's have a practical implementation on postback so as we have seen in the previous video like here is a button and when i will double click over this button in this cs page there is a method which will be called as soon as I click the button and the uh, corresponding action will be taken. Now, if I'll talk about the postback, so for that, let me first execute this page. And here, when I'll click over this button, you can find here that there is something called reloading is taking place. Basically, this is nothing but the post back. Like as soon as I will click on this button, this post will be posted to the server. And since I am not redirecting to any other page, it will be coming back and this will be a post back operation. Whenever the post back take place, the new instance of the page comes. And for checking that, what I'll do is I will take a couple of text boxes from the toolbox like first I will take a text box from the standard control but these standard controls are the customized one from the ASP.NET so after that I will also take a text box from the 
HTML. This is the raw HTML text box, means without any manipulation. So the first one, the first text box is the ASP.NET server text box, while this one is the plain input type text box of HTML. So let me execute this page again. And here, when I will enter any text in the first text box, and similarly in the second one, so when I'll click it, you see the value of the second text box got vanished, right? Because every time when I'm clicking on this button, a new instance is being sent and that new instance is having a blank text box. Why this text box is not getting blank? Because this is the ASP.NET text box and a uh, some kind of state management is being done internally by uh, the ASP.NET. So that's why we cannot lose the value from this text box but as soon as I'm clicking over the button this raw text box is getting blanked. So that is why we can say like every time a new instance is being sent. Similarly if during this postback when I'm not redirecting to any other thing uh, the same page got posted and the same page comes back. So if I want like I'll post home.aspx and in the back I want some other page. So that's what we can also do. So for that I will right click and will add one more page in my web application. I will choose a web form with the name let's say about us. Inside it, I'll not do much fancy things, but I'll just put a heading like about us. So here you can see in the design, the same message got displayed. So now what I want is, when I will click on this button, I want to post home.aspx and I want to get back about.aspx. So for that, what I'll do is, here I will get a post back URL property on the button. So basically when I'll talk about this post back URL, it will, if it is blank, the same page will come back. But if I'll give the preference of any other page that is uh, about us.aspx. So in that particular case, I will get a new page. So for checking, let's execute this page again. And here, when I will click over this button, I will get about us page. All right. So basically what happens? Whenever you click on this button, this button will post the page. If there is no other page, the same page will come back. And as soon as this page will come back, first of all, the page load operation will execute. Apart from that, we have also covered a lot of post back, a uh, lot of events in the page lifecycle. All those events will take place accordingly along with page load and then the responding actions will take place. But if we are redirecting from one page to another using post back URL, then after the post back, none of these events of this page will take place. Rather, it will directly jump to this particular page that is about us.aspx and all the events of page lifecycle will execute for about us.aspx rather than for home.aspx. So if I will uh, j just come to the postback property, uh, postback URL property again and I'm just making it blank again. So what does that mean? It means like when I'm clicking over this button, oh, let's start with the first request. When I made a fresh request for the first time, that is the get request for this home.aspx, it will generate all the events of page lifecycle for this particular page, including the page load. But when I'm clicking the button or doing any operation with this particular page after getting it, and those requests are actually the post request. So every time, whether it's a get request or post request, the same page is getting reloaded and all the events of page lifecycle will execute. So in that case, what happens is uh, basically the page load means the event which we will use very frequently will execute every time. For example, uh, for this instant reference, uh, just to show you, let me do one thing. Uh, though we will cover all the controls in a great detail later, but for just showing you, what I'm doing is 
I have just taken the drop down list which you may have seen in the vari uh, website, various websites. So it contains a list of elements. All right. So what I'm doing is on the page load, I'll be adding few elements in this drop down list. So for that drop down list one dot items dot add. All right. You don't need to worry about all the methods of this. We will cover all the different controls in our coming videos. So here it's item one. So like I have added three elements in the drop down list. So let's execute this page again. So now here you can see it's item one, item two, item three. Now let me click over this button. It will cause a post back and during this post back operation, the page load will be executed again and you can see item one, two, three, item one, two, three. All right. Similarly, as many as times I will click over this button, the drop down list will get populated and obviously this is not we want. So what we have to do is we have to make a check on the post page load event and on the other events like whether this particular page load is from the get request or the post request. I want it like these elements should be added when I am making a request of the page for the first time. So for that uh, here we have a property in the page object of ASP.NET page that is your current page. So page dot is post back is the property. So on the first page load on the first page load this is post back is false because in the first page load it is not a post back it is a get request. So post back will be false in the first request and it will be true in the coming ones. So what I can do is if a page dot is post back is equal to false means if it is a get request means it is a first page load only then I will add these three elements. So let's execute this page again. So here I can see there are three elements and if even if I'll click this button several times, I will not get any duplicate data in the drop down list. So this is what this property means. It will check whether it's a first page load or not. So is post back is basically returning us a Boolean value that is false in the first time and true in the coming. So rather than writing all these things, we can also write it like if not page is post back means if at the first time it will be false not will make it true in the next time onwards it will be true and not will make it false. So only this execution will be taken place in the first time. And since page is our current object on which we are working. So even if you want you can skip this page because by default when you will be calling any method or property it will be for the page object itself. So execution will remain same but yes this is how you can make a check over the post back and the concept regarding the post backs.